In the Rangeland Principles class, we did one whole section on plants of the Pacific Northwest, the Inner Mountain, and the Great Basin. And now I'm just going to show you a few of those plants that you need to know for class in Rangeland Principles. Let's start with the Pacific Northwest. One of the most important plants you should know up here is blue bunch wheatgrass. It's a bunch grass. It's definitely iconic species of the Palouse Prairie and the canyon grasslands that are up here in the Pacific Northwest. It's a pretty strong bunch grass, but it's quite open. So you see that the stems sort of um, droop outside and, and although you can tell it's a bunch grass, it's quite open. Um, its leaves are pretty much all the way up the stem. It's, they're not all basal, so that would distinguish it from some other plants. Okay, the inflorescence or seed head of blue bunch wheatgrass is a definite spike. Each one of these little sp spikelets, there we go, on the left-hand side, they're directly connected to the main stem. So there's no branch between the spikelet and the main stem, which makes it a spike. This one's very clear. It has oh, six or eight florets uh, that make up each of those spikelets. And you'll see that those spikelets have sort of diverging awns on them as they come off the top of each of those lemmas. So look for a spike type seed head and look for awns that diverge out and do not overlap. Okay, that's just one plant from the Pacific. Now let's go to the Intermountain region. A really important plant of the Intermountain region, but actually it's widely spread throughout the US, is this plant, Western Yarrow. It's perennial native and its most distinctive thing are these deeply lobed uh, leaves. The leaves are just dissected a million times. In fact, its Latin name is millifolium, millions of little cuts. It's mid-height uh, mid height forb. It also has a distinctive rhizome. So that's another important characteristic of this plant. And the, uh, the inflorescence is uh, a white color. You'll see that on the top, it's, a, it's got like a flat top. It's kind of umble like like an umbrella, but it's mostly a flat top with white flowers and it is a composite flower. You'll see there's some large ray flowers and inside of that are some disc flowers. So look for kind of a flat top white flower with highly dissected leaves and you should be able to get Western Yarrow. A few plants from the Great Basin then. Let's start with another wheatgrass. We started with Blue Bunch wheatgrass. This is Crested Wheatgrass. It also forms a strong bunch and its uh, leaves go kind of well up the stem. They're not, not all basal, but there's a real big difference in the inflorescence. While the uh, spikelets on blue bunch wheatgrass did not overlap, you'll see that these overlap extensively. It is a spike type seed head, meaning that those spikelets are directly connected to the main stem but they really closely overlap. They almost look like fish bones. If you look at this picture on the left, they're kind of just like fish bones coming up. They have really short awns. Uh, Blue bunch wheatgrass had long awns. This one has really short awns or just kind of on tips. So look for a bunch grass, but this time the florets and the spikelets are really overlapping on the spike type seed head. Big sagebrush is something you all should know. Probably if you live in the West, it's an iconic species of the largest ecosystem in North America, sage, big sagebrush. There are actually three subspecies of big sagebrush, but they all have this main characteristic. They're all, they can be two to three feet tall. Some are taller than others, but they have these leaves that have three tips. In fact, its scientific name is tridentata, three tips. So look for a sagey color leaf, and at the end has three toes on it or three tips. It does have flowers, but they're not very showy. These um, in this uh, these pictures, that's it. That's what the flower is. It's that stalk that sticks above the leaves. Those are the flowers. So it is wind pollinated. Therefore, it doesn't need to attract insects and therefore it has pretty um, bland flowers. Another important plant of the um, of the Great Basin would be the plant that is down in those salt valleys, the salt flats that are in the valleys, and that's salt, shad scale salt bush. It's called shad scale because if you look on the pictures, it, its leaf is look about the size of a, a large fish scale. So it is um, was called shad scale just because of that, um, the, the leaf that looks kind of like a fish scale. 
it uh, it's low growing it branches up and each of those branches has a sharp tip on it so you can kind of see that in this picture here where there's a sharp tip on each of those branches um, it does get salt deposits on the leaves so the leaves are kind of sagey color but they also can get kind of uh, sparkly with with salt there's a pretty good picture of those leaves again those kind of shad scale like fish like leaves and then the flowers again are not very fancy this plant has male and female plants so they can look a lot different the male flowers on one female on the other mostly to remember they're just really bland they're not very fancy flowers as was the case with sagebrush so that is an overview of some plants from the pacific northwest the inner mountain region and the great basin